All right, guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna do something really crazy. So there's a lot of things I've been weighing, literally weighing the weight, and then weighing on my mind how I wanna do something with Scrappy. And it's something I designed at the start, and I have three different ways to take care of it. Here's what they are. First of all, the lightest way to, lightest way to build a plane is gonna be tube and fabric, period. It's always been the lightest, it's strong. The fabric is just so light, it's really the way to go. However, there's some twisting I have in this plane. Matter of fact, every cub has twisting. If you were to grab the vertical and kind of pull on it, you can actually see the frame twist, and that's normal. The tubes are designed to do that, it can handle it, um, no problem. But I've got 500 horsepower on the front, and I'm going to put a bigger vertical, bigger horizontal, rudder, elevator, everything's going bigger. And so that twisting is going to be hyper exaggerated. And so I've got to do something to minimize that. So here's what I thought about doing. I could either take cross braces and go from side of plane to side of plane, from top to bottom, and cross it out and run a web through the plane, and I could take that twist out, unfortunately. That would go through my baggage area, through other areas where my gas tank is, and it would just add a lot of weight. So I could go to another way, which would be I could take a giant carbon fiber tube I could make. I can go from the front of the plane right at the firewall, clear to the back, make a bulkhead at the back, two flat plates, a tube between them, and tubes are extremely hard to twist. So if you had a carbon fiber tube, you can't rotate them, that would lock the frame down. That would weigh very little. The downside, it'd go right through my storage belly pod I just made, and I've got this massive belly pod that goes through this aircraft, and that would take away that. So that's another option. What I've decided to do, and at first I thought it was gonna add quite a bit of weight, but fortunately there's a trade-off, and I get most of it back. And I've decided to do something I think is going to be really fun. I'm going to put an exoskeleton carbon fiber tube on the outside of the plane. Rather than inside a small tube, just like any conventional aircraft, airliners or carbon fiber racers or anything else, they don't need the, the steel structure inside. They just have a carbon fiber or a metal wrap and that becomes the structure of the airframe. That's gonna help with a lot of things. That twisting moment, the twisting at the front. If I wrap the entire plane with carbon fiber and then I connect it to the steel tubes, right now, any one of these steel tubes has a lot of flex in them and it's fine. But if I put weld tabs down it and I lock it onto a thick layer of carbon fiber, I can take that movement out plus the rounded shape. I won't make it flat like a cub is the rounded shape will take twist out of the plane. So what the heck? Here's where the weight really starts to come back for the added weight of carbon fiber. There's an entire baggage area right here that is wrapped in aluminum on all sides. Well, if this back wall is now carbon fiber of the aircraft, I don't need that one. And I can have all the sides that are already carbon eliminates that aluminum. On top of that, I was gonna have carbon fiber right here for a giant door. That didn't add any more weight because now the side of the tube will open up. That becomes the door. Right here, there was gonna be a little bit of fabric. Then it was gonna be carbon fiber for my oil coolers. Then a little bit of fabric. Then carbon fiber to get to my new shock system. Anyway, if I start figuring out how much I was gonna have anyway, then I minus off the areas like the baggage area metal. And then I had stringers that went down that kind of arc the fabric. Those stringers are several pounds. Those don't need to be there because I got the frame. So there's about a half a dozen things or more that I get to take out of the plane to save weight by putting a carbon fiber wrap on it. So yes, it's a little more heavy, but it's the best solution to take the twist out for 500 horsepower on the nose of this thing and a big giant tail. So. Let's build a carbon fiber wrap exoskeleton for Scrappy. <laughs>
All right, guys. <laughs> Try and make a giant mold of the entire fuselage arc so it's round instead of a more square carbon cut. All right, so transitioning a part from a round to a flat. So first I put the arc in it and I creased it the entire length. And then you can set it back on a flat table and slowly pound the crease back out of it. So uh, it's actually perfect. So this is going on the belly of the plane and then we'll carbon it and then we'll throw it in the trash. All right, getting close. Well, on the aluminum. All right, guys, it's the start of the next day. It took all day and into the night last night to wrap this entire plane. And a lot of us just held on with tape. A few places where the metal wasn't quite shaping the way I needed it. I had to put a couple pop rivets. This is so close, I could just lay up carbon on it. But then there'd be little steps between each layer. If you look over here close, you can see it's the 035 step here and if I were to just lay carbon fiber over that then when I go to do body work I'd have to use a micro filler to kind of bridge that 035 across to get a perfect skin and that adds weight so I'm going to do all my body work on here I can use cheap conventional bondo kind of shape a couple places that aren't blending exactly the way I want once I get that done then I don't have the body work on the back end, other than trace body work, like a heavy paint filler, then spray. So, but I won't have all the Bondo work, or not Bondo, micro filler work on the carbon fiber. So uh, I'm gonna go through, put a couple more rivets where the, where the gaps are a tiny bit big, and uh, then grind the heads off, sand it. <laughs> a ton of work to do today, but I'm really actually pretty happy with one really long day wrapping the entire plane um, unbelievably fast. I would have expected a whole weekend to prep the uh, entire fuselage. Mix up some Bondo, we're gonna get dirty. Back to work. Super scientific. Oh, well, that much. <laughs> I was hoping I could do it in one spread, but I'm gonna have to sand this, knock it down, then put one more little thin film layer over it. But this has got most of the shape, so I'm gonna try stop messing with it. <laughs> I can't discipline myself. All right, let me show you what I'm doing. At these tape joints, I got an 035 thickness aluminum step. And since the tape will leave that step and I want to put Bondo and then I want to sand it, it'll wreck the tape. So you got to rivet it together, but I'll show you a trick that makes this go really well. I'm taking a little air grinder and I'm grinding at each place I'm putting a rivet every four or so inches and I'm making a dimple in it that's about the depth of a rivet. And then I'll go through and I'll pop rivet that in with the thin aluminum rivet. And then I'll come back and grind the head. And some of, sometimes it won't even touch the head because I've it grooved this so thin that it, the head is almost indented. But then I'll go ahead and knock the head down. Then I can pull all the tape and put the bondo on. Now, a general rule of thumb for me, for every 10 thousandths of an inch of thickness of aluminum, I like to bleed the bondo back an inch for every 10,000. So this, since this is 035, round up to the nearest 040 aluminum, I should be about a four inches of bleed on the Bondo to make that invisible when you go to paint it. So that'll be my goal is about four inches back on Bondo for roughly 40 thousandths of an inch of material. But let me show you what that looks like. I'll pop rivet this, but if you come over here, you can see I did it here. That rivet disappeared inside there you can see a trace of it there a trace of it there 
but that allowed me to bleed back and you can see almost four inches there so this is perfect absolutely perfect if you look down the plane i'll do that on every single layer but the rivets will disappear i can do the bondo work but when i wrap this with carbon fiber and i pull this part it is going to be perfect so that's the goal let's get back to work all right so you'll see most of this head's going to stay if you look real close you can see the grinded divot sand around the edge and most of that head is still on there so now when i go to put the bondo on i won't bump up and down over these rivet heads it'll be gone of course you should never do this on an aluminum airplane and just destroy all the integrity of the plane and fall apart but to make a mold for carbon fiber with aluminum this is the only way to go so we can pull the tape off bondo it up let's get back to work maybe one maybe two more of these <laughs> You put 95% of it on and sand 80% of it back off, but a little closer each time. I came here to say hi. <laughs> My wife's saying hi. Hi. We gave her a 60 grit paper and put her to work. <laughs> this is not hard, but it's, it's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lucky guy. Oh, all right, so this is why we do Bondo on the mold now because I probably got over 10 pounds of mud on here, but I'm getting the exact shape I want. Ah. <laughs> um, and then when we pull the carbon fiber, I'll have almost no body work. So oh, that's worked. All right, guys, so this is the part we just finished. Super lightweight, actually really complex. Um, this was the mold. <laughs> I don't even know if we got any footage of putting it in. Basically, I needed to make an air outlet that came from the engine through the bars into here and exited on a slope. The plane's upside down, by the way. <laughs> and comes out the belly here. I've got side outlets on the side of the cowling, big fins which is standard on a carbon cup, but I needed more for this eight cylinder. Of course, we moved the oil coolers to the back so I wasn't robbing air for the oil coolers off the engine. So that gave us some more air, but that still wasn't enough when you calculated the amount of air we needed. So this is the part we made for the belly of the plane. And we made it out of just taping in pieces of aluminum, duct tape. Then we put in some wood rounded corners on the aluminum glassed them in, sanded them, and then waxed it all. So that's what gave us these big radius corners. Extremely lightweight part. And it just drops in like this. So the way this will work, if you look up on the top, there's now going to be a part that we make, a carbon fiber part that passes through from the engine firewall. It'll still be a sealed system. And it'll come out here. Then this could be a moving cow flap that can open and close and let more air in and out of the inbound air from the cowling. If it's ice cold in the winter, we could close it up tight and there'd still be air coming out of the side fins of the cowling. But if it's a hot summer, I'm on a climb steep with 500 horsepower thrown at it and I'm only doing 70, 80 miles an hour trying to go up hard and fast, I can open this up like a giant cow flap create a negative pressure zone on the back and suck the air through here that comes from the engine bay. So this is a giant cow flap on a worm drive. Now I decided to go one step further and it's a crazy idea. I've wanted to do it for years. So we're gonna try everything on Scrappy. So we're gonna actually make that cow flap on a drive that has several positions. When you turn it a little bit, it'll be cow flap low to high that will get it up to the point that we create the maximum suction out of the door. So if I grab a piece of just cardboard here, basically I can close my cow flap up tight and open it. The more I open it, this creates a negative pressure zone and sucks the air out of the engine. So for when I did the math at how many square inches this cow flap is, 
I decided I want to do something I've always thought about, and that is the dial will go cow flap to max, and then it will go 10, 20, 30, 40 degrees of flap. So what's really cool about this flap, this square inches area is the equivalent of half of one side of a carbon cup or a quarter of the entire flap of a carbon cup. Now, what's really fun, I actually have this located in a different spot and I moved it so that I can actually turn it into a flap. The way that works is typically a flap is at the back of the wing and it pivots down. When it goes down, you end up having to adjust trim or pressure because as the flap deploys, it lifts the tail of the aircraft. Well, I didn't want to add more lift to the tail of the aircraft on a huge pitching moment change. So we shifted this forward and I'm gonna make this a flap that is about 18 inches forward of the set of 30% of cord of the wing. What that means is as this deploys as a flap, rather than just a cow flap, it will become an actual flap on the belly of the plane. It's going to help lift the nose back up and counter the pitching moment of the wing. So I'm getting a whole nother flap and lifting the front of the plane at the same time. It's really a crazy idea. It was done back in uh, war times. They had flaps on the belly of planes. The flap that was on a low wing carried through the bottom. It's basically that, but we have an added advantage. My gear legs were upside down, so visualize flipped over. My gear legs pass and go outward like this. And they're covered, so they're sheeted coming out this way and this way. So when I rotate into a flare, the gear is coming out and it's capturing the wind like this. But all that wind is just racing past because they're, they're in relative wind until you get into a flare and then they move down into more of an angle of attack to wind. But the air races right by them. This is going to come up and close the gap on that so that all that air that's hitting the gear leg and racing by runs into a giant flap and directs the air downward. So it's gonna make a difference. I'm not sure how much, but I'm really excited to try it. So why not do a cow flap combo? Almost no more weight at all. If I'm gonna make a moving cow flap, put a longer actuator on it and make it an actual flap. So, the other fun thing <laughs> we realized, I've always wanted to do a candy bomber drop on the bottom of an airplane. And so I always thought, you know, I'm gonna do a little worm drive bomb bay doors and be able to put little parachute dudes Let's move, 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 move. with strings on them and drop a hundred of them and have all these little parachutes come out. And I realized what's great about this is I can do that. I'm gonna put an access from inside the plane, a tube that passes through from the, in front of the seat, right down into this door. I'll be able to fly around, have this cow flap closed, still have cooling air, fill it up with a bunch of parachute guys, and then fly over and open my bomb bay door. <laughs> so it's gonna be my bomb bay door, cow flaps and flap, all in one, no more weight. I'm kind of excited about it, if you can't tell. <laughs> anyway, we got lots of work to do. This part turned out super cool. Crazy lightweight, plenty strong. Let's make some path screws and carve in the back of this airplane. So back to work. All right, guys, we just finished basting this and spreading it out and we're ready to lay it. It's just sitting on a piece of cheap plastic from Home Depot. Uh, I got blue tape in the center to show me where center is, so I got Ron here. If anyone's wondering who the superstar is behind the scenes, that's the guy right there. He's always helping me. Okay, hold it. Ron, this way. Walk my way. Now drape it down. Ready? How about the back? Go ahead. We're good. Lay it down. Let go. All right. That went really well. Once we pull the plastic off, I can stretch it. It'll take this wrinkle out. And uh, first piece down, a <laughs> hundred zillion to go. <laughs> All 
All right, guys, this is our second to the last sheet. This is our last layer of all the layers. The second to the last sheet, right there, forward. Forward to the front of the plane. Here, there you go, that way. Okay, towards the front of the plane, right there. All right, I gotta pause the video just for a second. I gotta give you a critical tip. I would feel so bad if someone started a project and I didn't say this. Notice right here, we're wearing coats. There is no way we could do a wet layup on a one-off mold like we're doing if it was warm at all. I've got the slowest reacting two-part resin I can get and we are working fast to get it done. And so we had to chill the room and get it cold enough that we could work so many hours straight without that flashing and going hot on us. So don't ever try and do a job this big unless you can get that room nice and ice cold and work really, really fast or you're just gonna throw a fortune down the drain and rip it all off. So back to the video. My side's perfect. That's where we like it to go. Got one more sheet to go right there. And then we got to peel ply it, squeegee all the resin out of it that we possibly tan after the peel ply is on. The peel ply will suck most of it off. Um, then we're done for the day. But before I go any further, now that I've just roughly got this tight and no wrinkles in it, I got to take the squeegee and I'm going to pull, I guess it's not a squeegee, kind of. <laughs> I'm going to take the spreader, we're going to pull all of it down these directions only, never back the other way, and pull all the resin down and out. I can pull it tight enough that I can get it within about 10% of a bag part, but that's only because this is a big, easy to flow part. If it's really intricate, it'll get lots of resin in the corners. This one I can pull so tight, I can drag almost all the resin out of it. And when I'm done, this part, even though it's not bagged, will have very little resin. The less resin, the lighter it is, but more importantly, it's much stronger. So I got a whole butt. You see every pass, I pull off almost all the resin, and then I push it into the layer before it. Now I've done this on every single layer. You cannot wait till the end. Now, you could wait to the end if it was a two or three layer and you can get the resin to squeeze out of it. You get up into five layers like this, you'll never get the resin out or all the air bubbles out unless you do every layer as you go, pushing the resin into the layer before it and pulling the excess resin between the layers back out. So I'm gonna do this twice going down, twice going sideways. And again, on a 45, we'll get all this resin out of here. All right, guys. It's Sunday afternoon. It's my day. I get to do a lot of work. I've been so busy at work. I'm only able to work on Scrappy on the weekends. So on the weekends, we do crazy hours. Late last night, we finished this. So my Sunday, I'm going to call it Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> Of course, it's nowhere near Christmas, but I get to open my present. <laughs> so, carbon fiber. We'll cut out the windows. Oh my gosh. So cool about working with carbon fiber is you can make any shape. This was all, I almost put a gallon of Bondo here to make the belly of this plane. And look how nice it works out. Now, of course, all the metal and all the Bondo is going to go in the trash. But look how well that contours out. <laughs> Man. That turned out so perfect. My carbon fiber carbon cub. <laughs> Back to work.
Well, the carbon fiber is ready to come off. I did things like wrapping the carbon all the way around, knowing I couldn't pull the part off until I trim it. So right now I'm, I'm making my split line here on the top here, but this entire part, and then I got to trim the underside where I rolled it under. But this whole part is going to be able to clamshell open like this and come off as one giant part. So if I ever needed to do service, I could actually remove this whole thing and weld the cage and put it back on, do whatever I need to do. So I'm gonna get back to trimming it. What I'm doing here, if you look up close, I have this part, I'm marked where I'm gonna, this is gonna clamshell apart here. I overran the carbon fiber here really thin. So it's real easy. I put clear tape down on the carbon fiber. This is the underside of where this trailing link gear travels. But I can just slide this aluminum underneath and then trim down till I hit the aluminum and I won't hurt it. Work my way across and I'll, I'll trim the whole airplane that way, pull it off. So back to work. Done. All right, so what we've got now is the sides are trimmed up. And I've gone just about three quarters around the top of the radius so that I can pop this off. And it's basically gonna be spring loaded. As I slide it on the belly of the whole plane, I'll be able to just snap it on. So now that this is returned over the top, it's completely watertight underneath. I'm now gonna build a rounded cap that comes two inches down the side. And then I can put nut plates in this carbon fiber and attach the top of the plane and rudder all together as one giant piece. But if I need to service anything, I can actually just take the nut screws out, pop the entire top of the airplane off and work on anything. So um, you can still see I got all the aluminum in here. You see these stringers? These were for uh, fabric, so the fabric wouldn't shake. I've just got them taped in there so I can do the aluminum mold. Or, but uh, those stringers won't need to be there. I got to pull all this aluminum out. All that body works out. Man, it went perfect. <laughs> but I thought this would be a lot bigger job. I thought I'd be on it for weeks. And we're, uh, I don't know, maybe three, four full days in. Um, long, hard days. But uh, this could have been a several week project. So I'm pretty excited about it. Back to work. Yeah, yeah. First time we got to pop it off. And see how the bongo in there? This is awesome. Look how nice that part looks. <laughs> All right. The moment of truth. I've got most of it popped. Got to get it around these tabs that will hold the horizontal. Woohoo! <laughs> the entire. Bottom of the plane. <laughs> yeah, I love making airplanes. It looks like the Bondo came with it. But uh, I guarantee, because I know I waxed it a couple times, I'll get a screwdriver, just barely pop it, and it'll all come off. So Awesome! This is so rewarding. So dang fun. And this is unbelievable. Lightweight. It's gonna be kind of sad. <laughs> all this work now goes in the trash. But so does all the weight, all the bondo, all the mess. And all I have is a great big giant removable bottom of an aircraft. So let's strip this junk off, throw it in a dumpster, get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Garbage. That worked. All right, I've got everything sanded. I got the extra layers on here now, and now I'm going to make the overlap so I can screw these two parts together. You can see I've cut all the way through here. I've got clear tape right here. It's hard to see, and then I've got resin on this side. I'm going to lay carbon fiber from this point to this point. It will stick here. It won't stick here. I'll flip the part over, cut these little teeny tiny ticks out from the other side. 
and I'll be able to pull it apart. All right, I took my little spreader and I pulled off all the resin I could. All I wanted to do was scrub the resin in with my hand and then I scrape off all I can. More is not better, it's actually weak. Uh, but it's clean. Now we'll just go ahead and overlap this a couple inches. We're going to repeat this five or six times. And we'll have our lip to put our nut plates in later. So right now, right now I'm drilling the holes that will be where I bolt the two pieces together. I've got the overlap here. I've got the little ticks I'll cut, break it apart, and then I'll put nut plates on this side. So we're getting close at least with this part. All right, so this is all done. See, we popped it off. Pulled the tape off where I trimmed it. If you take a close look. You can see that step right there. Anyway, we'll put the nut plates on here. And then this, and this part will be able to tear it up. I normally wouldn't go that thick. It's really, really thick. But this is the bottom of my belly pod. This sits that way. My air outlet is here. That's the belly. It'll screw into here. Anyway, that's what it looks like done. A <laughs> little sanding, we're ready to go. All right, guys, so here's a tool not everybody needs, a set of calipers long enough to measure this pipe. Um, what we're doing now, we're making some pretty cool parts that are only going to be used one time. So this is going to be welded up like this, but in between here, I've still got a machine, some parts that go in here with a 3 8 hole, and we're going to actually get a piece of all thread and install the chromoly brackets we made for the landing gear, and we'll put them in here. We'll have an all thread so I can have a, an adapted piece for a 3 8 hole. This will go on it, we'll clamp it all together. This will go to here, we'll put several pipes all the way down the ladder. Basically, this is just gonna be a jig. We're gonna throw it in the trash when I'm done because this is a one-off part. This is everything we need to make the gear assembly for the front of Scrappy. So all this works so we can weld something up and then throw it away. <laughs> Back to work. All right, guys, so I got all these parts, machined up these little plugs go inside this pipe, and I made this adapter, these spacers. These are to go in between these, which we laser cut, like this. We got some all thread. We're gonna put it all together and I got every one of these machined exactly the length. And what I did is I actually added to this piece of pipe, 10 thousandths of an inch. What it's for is give me 5 thousandths of an inch on this side and 5 thousandths on this side. I made it big by 10 thousandths of an inch. That's so after I bolt this all together and weld it on the plane, all these pieces all assemble. When I pull it out and then have it powder coated, I won't have to try and bend these out or smash the bar to get it in there because of the paint thickness. So I've accounted for paint thickness. I can bolt it tight. Everything will stay perfectly square in a big long line and we can weld up our gear. So we got a lot of work to do, but let's put it together. Here's a bracket, tightened everything up. None of these can twist out of alignment. They can't move out of square. So as I'm welding, they won't bend and twist um, as you weld one spot, it likes to try and rotate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through real quick. I'm just going to use the MIG. I'm going to burn all four sides and all four points. And then once that's all tacked all the way along, then I can go through with the TIG and go through and run out full length beads and clean it up with the TIG. It's hard to see, but even this end bracket right here has a three degree curve to it. That little three degree curve matches the curve I've got on the plate on the wall. So I drew that all on the computer. All right, guys, ready to weld up this side. I'm just gonna tack it. I've machined these on the machine so that the fit is exact, all the spacers. You can see I just rotate this up. There's nothing to measure. 
it's either perfect or not. And so we're ready to tack it in place with the MIG. We'll burn it with the TIG later. Back to work. More scrap metal turned into parts for scrappy. Sanding this up, getting it ready. This, uh, How many times I'll get to keep making parts out of that, but it made parts for Draco and now it's making parts for Scrappy. These, um, oddly enough, speaking of Draco, these were the spacers I used to space all my brackets on. And um, they're actually the tubes that went in the leading edge of Draco that aligned the new airfoil shape I made on Draco. So Draco scrap parts became templates for Scrappy. <laughs> anyway, what I've got now, I'll start fitting these up. I cut that plate up, turn it into these. Made a, a spacer to hold my king shock so I can weld. That is the correct spacing for a king. This will go on here. These notches I made there, this will be the shock mount, but it will come in from the back side. So I'm going to cut these little grooves. This will slide through. And then that will go back into the main uh, double truss I've got behind there. This is where all the loads will be absorbed on the shock. So a um, lot more work to do, but it's going really well. It's super awesome to get all these brackets on. The entire carbon fiber comes off in several pieces. The whole front glare shield is done. This comes off the top, the windshield, the back. I can pull apart any section of the plane without disassembling the plane. So if I need to get to anything, for work, repair, wiring, I can just remove a panel, put it back on. So, which I'm doing over and over. So, let's get back to work. Uh, <laughs> all right, so, probably got a couple more hours of sanding. Got all these brackets for the gear. Should look real familiar, just like a cub gear. <laughs> Not really. So, um, right now, I've just put one layer of carbon fiber over all my chromoly brackets. And then I'm shaping with micro, which is basically glass BBs, tiny, tiny. It weighs nothing. It's an awesome product mixed with resin that's for carbon fiber. And you put it on almost like a Bondo, but it weighs like 1 20th the weight, and it's really strong. And I'm just shaping the final shape of what I want around all these brackets. So you can kind of see I'm sanding through that one layer of carbon. I've got um, the, the primary shape there. Now that I've got the shape, I'll fine tune it. And then I'm going to put four more layers of carbon over top of this trace left of micro I have left when I'm done. Then I can sand that back out. But this way, when this panel comes off, it comes straight off the side and goes straight back on. So I can pull it on and off anytime I want. Oh, I'd have to move the gear, but likely these panels won't come off. It'll be like a boot cowl on a traditional cub. Usually those are riveted on, don't come off without wrecking paint. This will just be some screws and the whole thing can come off and get to the inside. But uh, a lot of work to do. Let's get back to it. All right, guys, we got all the brackets carboned up. They're gonna look a little bit messy because they're all run long, so we'll trim them all up. But uh, we get this all done, sanded, and um, it's gonna look really cool, I think. The back's on. I got a little bit of trimming and sanding to do. It fits almost perfect. Got a couple thousandths I need to sand off. It's got a tiny bit of work to do but all in all it's going great <laughs> this plane is going to need very very little body work almost none so um super happy back to work all right guys this is the end of this video i'm really excited about how it turned out i'm super happy with how we got it done um i was back and forth between how to get the twist out of the frame i'm really happy with putting an exoskeleton, all carbon fiber skin on it. Uh, I, I actually, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm just beside myself about how this silly build is going. And I'm having so much fun 
The door jam trim turned out, um, I think it turned out great. I'm really pleased with it. We got some cool stuff coming. The front landing gear, I'm gonna get to it. All I have to show you right now is these points. I've changed it at least twice in the computer. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times on paper, but every time I change it a little, I think I improve it a little bit more. We'll wait and see how it turns out. I think it's gonna be awesome, but we won't know until we get it done. But that's coming really soon. Come back, I hope you follow along. If you like aviation or others that might like builds or flying or might get into flying, let's get everybody up in the air. Let's get back to work.